And they fought. As a Christian, every time we fought, when we first come down, I catch you. But then one day you be like, God, you gonna catch you today? Smack, right on the head. You know why? Because he says you're big enough to walk on your own. Yeah. Okay. And spiritual effectiveness. What is that? Time to build somebody else. Are you effective spiritually? Amen. If, like, again, if you would take that same energy you use to manipulate and have self motive and help someone spiritually, watch out, God will bless you, man. You got to learn how to sow things to get things. And I'm not talking that sold me a billion dollars at my feet. Have you sold any love to anyone? Have you sold any comfort? Have you sold anything that will help somebody go over front? A few dollars ain't helping them, but your wisdom can help them. Your ability to rebuke them and let them know they do them off helps them. Open rebuke is better than secret love. That person I was kissing when you called me your friend, they ain't your friend. <laughs> Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Oh, yeah. Best friends I ever had were the ones that spanked me. No matter how much I tried to tell them, wrong, 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 baby, listen to me. Are you finished yet? Now, you know you were wrong. Go repent. Thank you for those friends, Lord. Amen. Because they know you. Go to 1 John. We're going to talk about spiritual growth. In this 1 John, chapter 2. <laughs> I guess we got a little bit more time here. 1 John, chapter 2. I never taught this here. It would always be that I would preach so long that I would never get to this place. So, if you ever want to see the recipe for growth in the Bible, here it is. Now, those of you who are willing to grow spiritually, if you're willing to just remain the same, then remain the same. But study this, grab another translation, read it, go over it, and watch how God says these things. First John, what did I say? First John chapter 2. Right? I'm in second. <laughs> First John and second John. First John chapter 2. I was in second. First John chapter 2. Look at it, starting at verse 1. 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Pay attention to everything I say concerning little children, young men, and old men. Because guess what? There ain't no such thing as a teenager in the Bible. Amen. There ain't no such thing as dating in the Bible. Amen. People who say, you know, I'm dating so and so, you say I'm born again. <laughs> my brother called me the other day when they informed me what my daughter's doing. She dated a brother at the church. I said, excuse me, how do you know they ain't just ain't friends? Well, I see them together all the time. I said, you know what? I used to bring women to the church all the time who were strung out on drugs, who were hooking on the street, and y'all used to accuse me of the same thing. I said, well, don't put that sin on my daughter, because you like her. Hello. <laughs> I said, my daughter's wise. She don't date. They're either friends or a potential husband. Well, I'm sorry, brother woman. Yeah. Shut up, you using son of a gun, you. <laughs> talking about my daughter. I know my daughter better than you. She, she was not raised to be that way. Sorry. Amen. So people who say you're dating, or oh, they're dating because you got a female or male friend, shut up! I got more female friends than a little bit. I guess I'm seeing with them all, huh? Shut up. Some of the best friends I've ever had were women. Since then, it really is just so I can find out about the women I was with. Hey, what do y'all do when the woman does this? Because I want to know. <laughs> And I would tell her what men do. So she would not. Okay. <laughs> Alright, starting in verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not, my little children. <laughs> and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the what? Propitiation. That, that word propitiation. Propitiation. It only means big word for mercy. Alright? He is the mercy seat for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hello. So when Jesus died, he died for all you who were sinners too. But it still takes an effort for you to get broken enough to come to him. Amen? But he did die for you, whether you believe in him or not. He died for you. Verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his what? Commandments. He that said, I know him and keep him not his commandments is a no? Is a what? Amen. I love you, Jesus. Liar. There's a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God 
perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that said he abided in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. If you say you're in Jesus, why aren't you walking like Jesus? Or even try to walk like Jesus. Give him the effort to walk like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, here we go. Brother. Verse 7, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which we had, which you have from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light is now shining. Oh, y'all don't hear me, man. Ooh, some of y'all got it. Verse 9, he that said he is in the light and hated his brother, he that says he's in the light and hated his brother, is in darkness even until now. Oh, I know the Bible front back, I can't stand it. Darkness! Even the devil loves his own. Hello. <laughs> Verse 10, he that loves his brother will abide in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him, because you need light. So you got to understand what they're talking Back then they didn't have light poles and electricity. You know, they had to carry lamps and walk down the road. They had to see things. They didn't have it, they stumbled. So Jesus said, I'm the light for, so that you don't have no occasion to stumble. What's the light? That word of God that you're putting in your heart. The willingness to change and be broken and lean on him. Take up your cross daily. Amen. Amen. Verse 11. But he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. He don't know where he going. Now, here we go. Here's spiritual growth. Ready? I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, babies, because your sins have been forgiven. You come unto me. I write unto you, fathers. See that? I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. Hello. Now you mature and destructing your son and daughter in which way you go. Hello. Mm -hmm. I write unto you young men. Uh-huh. Because you have overcome the wicked one. Do y'all see the growth here? You see how he's talking to children, fathers, young men? I didn't see teenagers in there yet. Hello. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Because children like to sit at their father's feet. Children, when they see father coming down the street, they usually run to his arms. I know my daughter, when she was little, all she had to do was hear me coming home and she would shoot. <laughs> Daddy's on. It wasn't that she heard me hollering down the street. They go, my daddy. Amen. Verse 14. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong. You are strong. And the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Look how many times he tells young men, I write unto you because you overcome the wicked one. Keep going. Then he tells us what to do. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Let's keep going. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Are you ready to be broke? And do the will of God. Mm. Verse 18, little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. A bunch of people walking around calling themselves Jesus, they ain't got no Jesus in their heart. A whole lot of them are calling themselves Jesus. See? If you don't know the word, you don't know we in the last time. Amen. Amen. Verse 19, they went out from us. See, they knew the things of Jesus. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Hmm. They hung around us. They hung around spiritual things. They hung around friendship, but they ain't with us. They only here to feed themselves. Self-motivated. 
Amen. But they went out from us. They would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction. Put, a, put an effort in front of that unction. What does it be called? Function. You have a function from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Now, for those of you who want to study the, the other scripture, I won't go, I won't go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 12, which will talk about the thing that Jesus said you must put in your spirit to be broken, and that if you do these things, you shall never fall. If you do what he says in chapter 2 Peter chapter 1 through 12, and he tells you, if you obey these things, love one another, obey one another, put on purity, do all these things, you shall never fall. Amen? Amen. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this message today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How many of you are ready to be broken? Yeah. Amen. If you're ready to be broken, speak this prayer with me. Say, Father, I thank you. Amen. For this message, I'm a sinner that needs to be broken. 